Awesome. All right, welcome. It's the 7th of June. This is documentation office hours. Remember, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. So Diraj, one of the things that I was hoping for was that you'd be willing to try another time to create the weekly change log. Oh, I'm gonna turn off my uh, camera. We don't need to watch me. Are you interested in doing that again? Or is there something else that was more important to you for us to do tonight? Well, uh, from my side, I'm comfortable with anything that you think should be of more priority. Well, so I would love to do one more time the run the weekly change log and have you be the person who submits it uh, because that way if i'm not available next week or the the weeks after that we could still get a weekly change log i when i brought this to when i brought this to the jenkins governing board there was some skepticism while well, we're not sure that a, a someone who's not a, an experienced jenkins core developer can actually maintain the create the weekly change log and you were great proof last week that yes, somebody can. Yes, definitely I'll prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I'll try my best, definitely. Okay, Not so if- just anybody could do it, somebody with some talent. <laughs> wow, thanks. <laughs> so should I share my screen? Yes, please, if you could. Sure. And is there any background noise that I, even if there is, it's worth it. Let's just go ahead. That's great. You just leave your 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 microphone on, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll talk to you and ask you questions and let you answer while you're sharing your screen. Awesome. So I think you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. I was just trying this uh, right now, so okay. So we are at Jenkins Core Directory and we want to run the Docker command. But before that, last time we were- uh, So are you, we, are you up to date with the current version that's on the remote on, that's on, the, on Jenkins? Exactly. So last time we did that, we ran into some problems. So you suggested me that there's a file in which you need to change the version, the latest version. So from that, it will be fetching all the PRs. Right. Well, actually, even before that, your Jenkins core, mm -hmm. the 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 I think the directory in right now is the Jenkins directory, right? So mm -hmm. here, if you could do a git log, let's mm -hmm. see what where where it's at, and let me double check to compare that it's at the correct location. So when I look at mine, Jenkins core is okay. So you are. So you, it looks like your copy, your local copy of Jenkins core needs to be updated. And so what you're going to need to do is quit out of the, out of git log and do a git pull minus minus all. Okay, now you need to do a git merge upstream slash master and there's actually a, a another command you could use instead but this one will now bring your local copy current with what's on upstream and now if you do the git log it should show something about sshd core yes it does good yes. okay mm -hmm. so your so jenkins jenkins core is up to date mm -hmm. now if you'll if you do a one more step, do a git space push, this will push your merged master branch to your fork. You don't strictly have to do it, but it's, I like to do it just to remind, oh, now you have to remember your username and password. <laughs> Super, okay, so so now your local copy of Jenkins core shows all the latest changes. So now you should be ready to run that Docker command. Let's see. This one. Uh -huh.
So this will take up all the PRs that has been. Right, it should. Oh, oh no, what's it saying? Okay. Let's no. Uh, 2.296. Interesting. Okay. That seems like the correct, that is the correct version. Mm -hmm. So why is it saying no URL specified? Docker run curl, no URL specified. Okay, we may have to have you stop sharing. Uh, let's have you stop sharing your screen so that you don't show us something we shouldn't see. And then sure. now on your local command line, instead of just in the Docker run, put the word echo in front of it and see what it's outputting as your GitHub underscore auth. It should be a username, I think usually a username, a colon, and a passphrase or a, a, a token. You know, so it should like, look like a username password. Does it? Um, no. Dash V and then a location of the workspace, dash dash RM, and then location of core generator. Huh. Okay. So let so me. To set my GitHub out, I think. You may not have a value assigned yet for GitHub underscore auth, but but we ran this last week, so I mean it worked last week. Hmm. So you may need to define the GitHub underscore auth environment variable. And let me double check while you're doing that. I'm going to double check just to be sure that GitHub isn't down because there actually are times when, okay, it's, it's working okay for me. So I think it may just be that you don't have a value for GitHub off. Okay, now it has a value. Okay, great. So now you can start sharing your screen again. Uh, clear your screen so that we don't see your GitHub credentials. We don't want to record those. That's none of our business. Even go up now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, well, so the, if you so look in the if you look in the README file mm -hmm. of the of the the generator, it's got the exact Docker command you need. Yeah, in core changelog generator in the README.md. Mm -hmm. This. Exactly that one. Well, or or the one above it. You need the one. That one is fine. You just have to remove the the number off the end. The one that your icon is over right now is the one. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Good. Okay. Okay, now that's a fun one. A parse error. Hey, could you do an echo? Um, dollar sign Lang space dollar sign LC underscore all, uh, all it's capital it's all uppercase dollar sign LC LC underscore all uh, and I think that's it yeah those two enter ah yes okay so and they might be okay but could you instead do export space lang equals en underscore 
capital I N dot UTF dash eight, where the UTF dot eight dash eight is all caps. Yeah, and let's see if that helps. English has spoken in India using UTF eight character set. Let's try it. So I'll run the doc command once again. Yeah. And now your arrow key should work. Yes. Okay, that's better. So one of the problems I had found in the past was mm -hmm. that that Docker image for some reason want, did not have UTF-8 as its character set. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what you just did is you've now used the correct character, character set. Good, okay. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the the template. Yes. So now we'll go to the Jenkins I website mm -hmm. and open up their weekly.yaml file. Right. So let's edit here only. What do you think using nano? Because in uh, VS Code we had some problem last week. Yeah, VS Code really surprised us. So you're welcome mm -hmm. to experiment with VS Code, but I think I think it's more aggressive with its formatting of YAML than we're ready for. Sure, so what do you suggest where should we edit the files? Yeah, so so Nano is great if you're comfortable with Nano, whatever editor you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So change and uh, I think it's in content and then data. Right. So this is change log file that we just generated. Right. And if we move forward, alt dot yes. And this is the weekly file that we want to generate. Right. So so yes, please. Yeah, now I am not I am not a nano power user, so this will be a very interesting experience. So I would assume you mm -hmm. move down one line and drew do a control K a bunch of lines uh, to cut the text and then you go paste it into the other file and then we'll edit it in the other file. Oh you won't let yes. you you probably won't let you cut, will it? No. Oh no, meta A, there it is. Yeah, look, meta A, mark text. This one or meta six yeah so meta six is copy text right so meta a to mark it and then meta six to copy it i'm going to ask a very silly question what is this meta a, a oh meta, meta means the alt key sorry oh. yeah that's a that's an <laughs> emacs damage mm -hmm. yeah but but your technique that you're using now should be great so now if you can switch to the other the other buffer and so copy that with your editor. Yes, yes. Okay. Done. Then we're going to paste it here. Yeah, I think so. Now, where are we in this editor? This this is. OK, but so there should be a very long file, right? There should and there isn't. OK, so maybe it's time to close this. Let's go back to VS Code. You're comfortable with that. Let's use VS Code and we'll figure right. it out. I mean, let's not put you into some strange and bizarre editor. Let's get you into, into something that's comfortable. Okay. Last week, we were not able to catch the difference, right? The YAML file, the VS Code did on our YAML file, the full YAML file. Well, but but I think let's just see if we can figure it out because mm -hmm. ultimately you're you're comfortable using VS Code, right? Mm -hmm. And lots of lots many many users edit with VS Code. So mm -hmm. if VS Code is going to do damage, we want to know how what we need to do to make it work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
this is the VQAM if I let it go on to make changes to. Yeah, this looks great. And also open up the template that we just created. Um, it should be Now we'll probably, even mm -hmm. after you get the, the file in the editor, we'll probably want to go mm -hmm. check your Jenkins.io that it is current. Okay. And yeah, you can, yeah, you don't need to save that modified buffer. Hmm. So here from your shell, we want to go to the Jenkins.io directory. Mm -hmm. You want to do? I'm sorry. What, what do you? Want yeah. To do? So do a git pull minus minus all. Okay, and. Git space status, we'll probably want to just throw away local changes for the moment. Yeah, so I think what you want to do is say git space merge space minus minus abort. Abort, A-B-O-R-T. All right, so now git space reset space upstream slash master. Oh, now that's interesting. Why would it have unstaged chain? Okay, get get status. This is interesting. Okay, so get checkout dash dash dot space dot. Uh, sorry, you need a space after the dash. Yeah, enter. Now do the git status. So what we're trying to do is get this to to match with upstream. Now we want to check out a different branch. Let's check out master. Git space checkout space master. Sorry for that. And git reset minus minus hard space upstream slash master. So what we're going to do here is make your local copy of the master branch exactly match upstream. Okay, now do a git log. Okay, and yes, okay, that's good. So now, and now if you just say, for your own benefit, you can say git space push space origin. What this is going to do is make your your private your your personal copy your fork match with upstream. Hmm. Good. Okay. All right. So now we need a new working branch. So git checkout minus b. And change log dash two dot two hundred ninety seven. All right, now we're ready to go back to VS Code. Okay, so there's this is the prototype, and is the weekly.yaml that's on its left also? Oh, yeah, very good. This is the change. Hmm. Yeah, so what we want to do now is take the, the text that's in the top and do the same edit we did last week of to transform it into the bottom. Mm -hmm. Whoops, that you just move the comments. Mm -hmm. You want to put it after those Should comments be because it's a new one. Exactly, right. Mm -hmm. 
we will want to do the changes we need to do first type of this is here and we copy it and paste it and change the version here right and because that looks like a number it needs to be in quotes so it needs to be either single or double quoted yeah double quotes are great and then the release date will be it's tomorrow is the 8th isn't it yes it's eight. or today is the 8th yeah. for you yes yeah, so so the 8th is the release date All that work is done now. We need to start working on making these messages, right? Exactly. Right. Very good. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. So it says, I was ignoring this on the post change log. Erase condition in class loading for the waiting in case of it. And for me, that's a good enough description. That really, yeah, I would take that. Again, this is me that that admitting I know who Jesse Glick is. Jay Glick is mm -hmm. a very, very frequent um, author, and he writes very, very well. So whenever I see Jesse Glick and Daniel Beck, I just need to close my eyes and just exactly that's that's been my approach <laughs> anyway. Is when I see anything from Daniel or from Jesse, I just close my eyes and accept what they've got. Now, this one does have something to teach us here. You see the characters surrounding the word linkage error? Yes. They're that sort of backwards quote. Mm -hmm. Those need to be transformed into an HTML code tag. So a less than code greater than. Hmm. Similarly, how we did last week for no method error something. Yes, yeah, you're right. I didn't remember we'd done that last week. Yes, that's right. Okay, ready to go to the next entry. Hmm. So this is a bug. And first one was also a bug. So mm -hmm. This should be at the top above RFP. Okay, that's good. Um, sure. Yeah, I, I don't remember which order. That's a good question. I'm going to have to look at the style guide to yes. see which order the style guide says. You keep going and I'll look up the style mm -hmm. guide. So, do not change fonts when artifacts are shown as free. Fix font change or Jenkins you are in build artifacts. This is good. Yeah, okay, so mm -hmm. so this is one where we may want to beg for Meg or Kristen's help. I actually like the PR title better than the better than the proposed change log. It says do not change fonts when artifacts are shown as I might say it as a tree. Yeah, I almost like the the R title better too. Yeah, so so uh, Diraj, I would keep the yeah. PR title. Mm -hmm. it, it's more of a sentence. Yeah, and it, and mm. it's also I think it's not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just like ah, it feels weird to say fix here, but yeah, I, I don't know. I I kind of like it. So. Sure. So and now, one of the things you need to do there is be sure you end with a, a hard stop with a period. Mm -hmm. Great. So there's two. And then this one is RFP. I'm looking up the style guide. Um, while we're picking mm -hmm. at pros, in the previous one, remove of comments digester from core. I think the of could go. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, and that. that's the one he's I'll working on now. Oh. So, okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so which one are you suggesting to keep? 
she's she's saying keep the keep the proposed change log, remove Commons Digest wrapper, and delete the PR title. Okay, so. Oh, now, whoops, there was one item there. Did you see the developer colon? We want to retain the developer colon because this is a developer specific fix that the end users won't perceive. Is this correct? Right. Mm. And, and that one you can tell because the category RFE mm. or the category is developer. Now there's an indentation change there, Diraj, that you may need to correct. No, it's, oh it, yes, it's different in your destination buffer than in the source. Interesting. Oh. Is that so Visual Studio Code doing that for yes, us? Yes, yes, totally. Okay, I'll, I'll just hit a tab. Answer from the And then for these as well. Ah, okay, so there you have a block indent and outdent facility in Visual mm -hmm. Studio Code. Nice. Mm -hmm. oh, it's right? That, that looks right to me. Okay, so developer, remove yep. commons digester wrapper from core and dependency entries. Yeah. is bumping and for this you suggested that some of the details regarding bumping from this version to that need not to be shown to the users so we need to search in the file whether this specific thing was previously added as a comment or not if it was added as a comment then we put it as a comment again as well right Right, exactly. So look, look for this one. I think this one was mentioned. I think SSHD has been mentioned very prominently recently. And so I think this one will need to be mentioned. Yeah. Yes. So it has been mentioned. Well, keep looking because that one is actually, I think, different. Yeah. Bumping. No, this one is just the recent one. So. Oops, there, yeah, so so we've done one case where we didn't mention it mm -hmm. and scrolled down, down one. Oh, there it is. So this is, I would keep this one because it's been a source of a number of recent changes. So I think we should keep it. Title should be this. Bump, this That's bump. what I would take it as is just take the PR title. Let me double check just to be sure that. Mm -hmm. That's PR five five four seven. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at it. Four seven. Okay. Yes, we've got several approvals, so let's include it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Um, syntax. Would it be better to say bump SSH or SSHD core from two point five to one to two point seven zero in Jenkins CLI? Oh, yeah, good. Yes. I think in Jenkins CLI should come after the release numbers. Right. Good Kristen, point. Do you agree? Mm. So this looks good, right? Yes. Yeah, I think that sounds that sounds right. Okay. So this was about the last one and then we just need to copy all of this. Just copy the comments. 
Now we have to do the also, investigation. Do we want to use bump or do you want to say? It's, it's, they've used bump before. That's a, a, an, a generated word used by Dependabot. And so we've usually just left the word bump in there. Okay. All right, now the challenge, Diraj, is- I know some people are probably bothered by it. Right. Diraj, the challenge now is to figure out what the diffs look like to see if it has mm -hmm. changed the, the file dramatically. Can you save that file and let's go out to a command line and do some, some differencing? Mm -hmm. So do a git space diff. I think I need to do this. That looks good. Yeah, so we, we would it would be nice to get rid of that trailing white space, but it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it reformatted the rest of the file. So that's a that looks like a big win. So it is suggesting to like, there is no extra space. Interesting. There's no extra space, but it's have you saved the file? Yes. Huh. Let's see. Try, again. Let's... Try the git diff again. Let's see. Oh, Whoa. okay. Now it did the oh. rewrite. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now how do we teach Visual Studio Code not to do that kind of massive rewrite of the file? any let's see maybe you do some searching i'm going to do some searching there's probably some configuration vs code to not rewrite yaml files Oh, wait a sec. There was, it said something about turn off, avoid reformatting, save. Oh, oh, look, there it is. Command shift P, save without. You can save without. Command, and command is probably alt save without formatting control k s okay now that it's saved it let's try that diff again Well, I guess I, I guess we could always save just the say copy the file to a separate location, reopen a fresh copy of the file, and copy just the last block, and then Mark, save without format. Sorry, what about Mark, using what? About what using Meg? Control instead of alt. Control instead of alt for command. I think it's uh, usually. Control is equal. Ah, could be, but I thought that when when Diraj did it, that he that the command became visible on screen. So Diraj, try doing that save without formatting again. It may be that the file's already been modified in in memory. So it was command shift P and save without formatting. Right, that one. Let's try. Because what did it say? Command Alt P. 
it usually it's control i think on windows well and, and diraj is running on yeah. linux oh, okay. i think mark said to do alt no. yeah that's so am i so my proposal let's have you copy the change logs weekly.yaml to a temporary location and reset it and we'll just bring it in from the copy So we need to copy this. Yeah, put it someplace safe on your desktop or wherever is comfortable. Okay. Then. And now you'll go to your command line and we're going to, or you could use VS, VS code as well. We're just going to ask Git to reset the file. So from the command line, it would be git checkout <laughs> dash dash space dot. So do you want me to do a terminal? Yeah, terminal is easiest for me. I know it can be done with VS code as well. I just don't know how to do it. So git checkout space dash dash space dot. So what that says is please check out any files that are currently modified and make them match what's on the on the in the repository. So this is basically a reset. Now if you do a git status, it should say as tell us that nothing has changed. Now we go back to VS code, reopen that file. It may have already detected that it's changed. Okay, so you want to open the same file on VS Code, the copy. Right. Open the copy and we'll paste its contents into the into the original. And then, then when we save the original, we will be sure we have you save it with file save without formatting. Okay, hmm. hey, now let's try that file save without formatting. Oh, 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 yes. Okay, <laughs> now there's still maybe a formatting problem here because I think, so now let's do a make run and see what it says. Because I think the indentation there is still a little surprising to me. Sorry, Diraj, that this is so complicated. Thank no, you for no. being willing to do it. Yes, that's my pleasure. So about the last time when I submitted the PR, she suggested me that there should be some, uh, there should be RFEs between major bug and uh, another type of um, change, which was like there has to be some gray colored changes between the two red colored changes for visual 
uh, easiness? If if they're available, yes. And this one, it, I'm not sure there will actually be any available. So mm -hmm. that's that's why we want to look at it visually here. So open it up in your browser and let's see what it shows. Okay, go back to the terminal window. Let's see if it's reporting an error or some surprise. You can, you can still hear me, right? Can hear you, yes. Yes. So it's just a little bit, little bit slow. I'm... Well, it's certainly, it's doing a lot of work generating this, the website, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here comes the site. Today when I woke up, I was ready to go through the last week's video on YouTube, but uh, I, I don't think you uploaded that, right? Oh, didn't I? I thought I had. I apologize. I will, I will get that uploaded. I should have done that. I uploaded two videos earlier today and must have missed the that one. I will get it done. Yes, thank you so much. Because I was trying to practice online so that's why i was looking for it <laughs> right well and, and that would have been a great help if i'd done what i should have done and and had it available for you no problem at all. oh there it is nope you're right i had not uploaded it i see it right there Okay, and this one is showing us that we need to make that change to that file. Notice that it says 2.296. When you click the change log, I bet it will show us a change log for two, only 2.296, and we just wrote 2.297. Oh, Are you able to see the change log screen? Yeah, so now it's generating the change log. Hmm. Or did it fail? So switch. Oh, no, it's coming still. Okay. Right, so it's showing us 2.296 and we need, because that's the most recent actual release. So we need to trick it by show, having it show us the next one by changing one of the files on the disk. Right. You remember which file that is? There's a file named version something or other in the content underscore data. I think it's underscore temp directory. Yes, I, I'm trying to switch to terminal now and it's very slow. Right. Would it help if I just uh, 
stop generating the website for now? It, it will because we'll need to stop it anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll have to regenerate it after we update that that value. Time has also stopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's still it's still delivering audio for you, and I'm still seeing the screen. So that's okay. Yes. So the website. No, we, the file that you're saying is in Yeah, I thought it was, let's see, so. Content, then data. Just a minute and I can, I can get you the exact name. Mm -hmm. It is content slash underscore temp, not underscore data. So content slash underscore TMP slash latest core dot TXT. And it's TMP rather than TEMP. Yeah, and the core there will be has a capital C in it. Well, and you could, Diraj, there's another way you could do it. We, you can just say echo space 2.297 2 was that what it was? Was the number we're, version we're working on? Yes, yes. And greater than, so redirect the output to that file named. Mm -hmm. And it's not slash content, but dot slash content. And now if you press tab there, it should complete it for you. So that's done now. Okay, now do the make run again and let's see if it, if it will let show it to us this time. Hello. Go ahead and type make run. Okay, I'm having some delay. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll type make run now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very slow now. But it, maybe you want to stop sharing your screen. That may make your computer much faster. Why don't we, let's have you just stop sharing because you know what to do now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's just have you stop sharing your screen and that way you get your computer performance back. Hmm. I have clicked on stop sharing. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to stop your sharing. Yes, please do that. Okay. And then I'll stop my share. Oops, I still see your screen shared. So it didn't appear to have stopped your sharing. There. Okay, you should see a blank screen from me.
That's weird. It keeps going back to showing your screen. Stop participant sharing. There we go. Yeah, I have a I have a control on my side that tries to do it. Okay. Hopefully soon you'll get you'll get your computer will be faster now, Diraj. Mm, It is a little bit slow, so let's take time to reflect. It, okay, tried. Now it has stopped sharing. Okay. Now I open up the terminal and run make run. And execute the command make run. Right. So already 827. I'll try to do it. I've not even switched to terminal yet. So is it is it not arriving yet? Mm -hmm. I I've clicked on terminal and it's about to open up. It's yet to open up. Okay, well let's let's wait. I've got another meeting scheduled to start in just two minutes, but I hope we'll be able to finish this and I may just tell the other people that I'm going to be a little late for their meeting. Because we're so close. Yes, I'm really sorry for this. Mm -hmm. But just in case it, it doesn't happen, it takes a long time. So what do you want me to do? Should I submit the PR and uh, the photo of it on the PR message, and then you can review it, maybe? Right, you could you could submit case. the PR. If you submit the PR, even without us having mm -hmm. seen it, you've already done quite a bit of help, and, and I can look mm -hmm. at the PR and do some reviews online after this other meeting finishes, so absolutely. I, I mean, you submitted the last PR, no problem. So I think, Diraj, if, you, if you're willing to do that submit, we could call this meeting done and I will, I'll review the PR asynchronously with you after, after you've submitted it. I think it's be better because to value every one of us. Mark, what about the minutes for this meeting? We didn't open those up. Oh, we did not, you're right. Meg, I should have made some notes. Yes. Would you be willing to, to oh, this do was good. We could just note who was here and what we did. Exactly. Yeah. If you could huh? uh, let me would you like me to do that? If you could, that would be wonderful. Send, the link's not in the calendar, right? I, yeah, I would have uh, to do that if you send I the link. I thought it was, but here I'll paste it into the here is the the I'll paste the link to the minutes into the chat here. So there are the meeting notes. Can you open those notes, Meg? Okay. Yes. Great. Let's see. There we go. I got it. Excellent. So even if all you can do is propose a revision there, I can then accept the change and and we'll have notes. So Diraj, you're okay submitting the pull request on your own? Yes, definitely. That would be actually better considering everyone's time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Diraj, thanks again for being willing to work through this. You are heroic. Thank you very, very much. Great work, Diraj. My pleasure.
Okay, I'm going to end the call and I'll upload. I promise this time I will up upload two meetings.